Okay, Raja? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, we start in about four minutes, okay? Yeah, and let the speaker yeah, I'm join. Just, I'm basically going to go the same thing, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And yeah, after I finish... We are still waiting for the speaker. Yeah, after I finish w one, you say, hi, I'm Raja, introduce yourself. I got you, I got that, I got Yeah, you. yeah, you introduce yourself and what you're doing, and obviously the speaker, okay? Yeah, sure. Professor Kajita has just messaged me, he's unable, he's not getting that link, Professor, I again messaged him. Sent him, you have Professor Kajita's uh, mail? I sent you a CC once. Hold on, uh, start some people. In. Your camera's not working there. Your camera's not on there yet. Oh, is the speaker here yet? Not, 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 not here. Not yet. Still, he just mailed me that he's unable to connect. He said he's unable to connect? Yeah. So I again mailed him the... Okay, did you send him the link? Yeah, I did. Okay. He said he is ready to. Have you communicated with him by... Uh... Yeah, I, I just did communicate with him. There's no hurry. We'll just start when he comes. Yeah. I just send you his mail. Oh, well, there's a couple of people with Japanese names. I don't, I can't read them. Mm, I think... You see the one last, of the Japanese uh, present? Yeah, a la, of... last one should be, seems like Professor Kajita. Oh, is the speaker here? Hey. Nice, no, muted. The, the last name, can you unmute him, the last name? Okay, hold on. Hello, the speaker, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, I'll just unmute all the Japanese names. Hello. Hello. Are you the speaker? Yeah, Hello. I'm Yasukazu Kajita. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. welcome, 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 Professor Kajita. Welcome. I didn't recognize the name. Okay, Raja, you gotta put your, your... Yeah. There you go, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you ready to start, Prof. Raja? Yeah, Professor Kajita, you can turn on your video and uh, after the introduction, you can turn off the video and share your screen. Yeah, I'm turning off. Oh. My video. Yeah, could you turn it on so we can see you and meet you? See your face? Okay. Because you have a good connection, right? Yeah, he has a good connection. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can, uh, don't be, sh you can use your picture. Uh, can I, the, the yes, present the my slides? Yeah, now, Professor Kajita, please turn on your video. On your video? On yeah. your video, so that we can see you. Once you start, yeah. then you can turn off it. Okay. Yeah, there you go, there you there go. There we go, there we go. How Thank you, doing, you Professor. I'm Dr. Thank Bennett. You. This is John Okay, Bennett. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce Roger. He's going to run the show, okay? Yeah, right. Okay, okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome. This is the 
fourth talk of the resident series of webinar. Today we have a special speaker for us who is a much lauded researcher in the field of movement disorders, Professor Yazukazu Kajita. He is from the Nagoya Medical Center. And today, on behalf of Professor Yoko Kato, the president of ACNS, and my co-host, Dr. Liu, I welcome all the attendees as well as Professor Kajita. Professor Kajita, you may please start Hello. your you may please start your Hello, who is this? presentation. Who is this? Hello? Thomas, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thomas, anything about? Hi. Uh, one guy, 81 years old guy, I think, and both his cousins. Ah, yes. Liu, can uh, you please uh, mute your uh, mic, Liu? Ah. Liu, okay. please mute, mute your why mic, Liu. I see my stride. No, no. Why? why yes, 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 yes. Yeah, please. Uh, 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 can I start? Uh, yes, one one minute. Uh, John, can you mute? No, no, no. Can, can you mute the problem. mic? The patient have a uh, fall. Yes, I'll mute Leo. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, there okay. you go. Right, okay. Professor Kajita, you may start. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to the thank you for giving me the chance to speak here today. My okay. name is Yaskazu Kajita. Big questions. And I work right. as a neurosurgeon at the uh, National Hospital Organization, the Nagoya Medical Center in Japan. I specialize in the functional neurosurgery. Now I talk, will talk about the deep brain stimulation for movement disorders. Okay. The, today's topic is uh, what is DBS? Indication and the patient selection for DBS surgical procedures, and the long-term outcome. Yeah, what is DBS? The DBS surgery requires the fundamental understanding of the neural circuit underlying the pathophysiology for surgical targeting and intervention. The cortex and terms and basal ganglia loop uh, comports of at least five parallel functionally segregated neural circuits, channeling the information between basal ganglia and the cortex via the tramus. The five principal loops are the motor, the ochromotor, the dorsal lateral plane frontal, the anterior cingulate, and the lateral orbit frontal. So based on this model, neurosurgical intervention for Parkinson's disease and other psychiatric disorders have been developed. Next, so I will mention the history of deep brain stimulations. The early surgical treatment for Parkinson's disease focused on relieving tremor corticotomy or ligation of a perforating artery of the brain improved the tremor. However, resulted in the paralysis of the patient. So the stereotactic system was introduced by Crank and Hosley and Spiegel and Wicks, the first used to operate the dorsomedial terms to relieve tremor in 1949. So following the successful introduction of levodopal therapy for Parkinson's disease in 1967, this ablative procedure was gone. However, levodopal therapy had a motor complication and pyridotomy for medical refractory Parkinson's disease started again in 1992. But by lateral reasoning caused this arrhythmia by 40 to 50 percent, very high percent. In the case with the Parkinson's disease, it is necessary to be reasoning on both sides. Therefore, it is a big problem. Yeah, Bellamy the found it that the high frequency stimulation has a similar effect to the reasoning. 
and that the high frequency stimulation of the VIM stopped the tremor in 18, uh, 1987. And in 1987, Slegfried demonstrated the beneficial effect of the high frequency of stimulation of the GPI. In 1993, Benavi has shown that the STN stimulation has a better, better effect of Parkinson's disease symptom. So DB system has a reversible and adjustable advantage compared with the region. And also the appropriate intensity, I mean the not a strong one, this stimulation does not induce this arrhythmia. A uh, DB therapy uses a surgically implanted medical device similar to a cardiac pacemaker to deliver carefully controlled electrical stimulation to precisely targeted area in the brain. So DB system has a small battery operated device called an implantable pulse generator, so called IPG and the tiny electrodes. So this X-ray image shows the DBS electrode implanted in the bilateral subthalamic nucleus and on IPG in the subcutaneous bilateral chest. The IPG has a rechargeable or non-rechargeable IPG. And in the non-rechargeable battery, the battery can be used for four to five years. Theoretically, so DBS works because the high frequency electrical impulse block abnormal nerve signal in movement disorders. The clinician programmer is used to adjust the stimulation programming to best control the individual symptoms while minimizing side effects. Now I'd like to talk about indication of DBS. Yeah, the story that this is a BG slide, but the DBS is now a well established surgical option for patient with medically refractory movement disorders with over 1,000 million patients implanted worldwide and in nearly 30 years. DBS of terms was first approved by the FDA in the United States for three months in 1997. Subsequently, DBS of STN and GBI for Parkinson's disease was approved by the FDA in 2002 and 2003 respectively. The following the success of dystrophy for mental disorders. So DB surgery has applied to the, the management of refractory psychiatric disorders and was approved, approved by the FDA for obsessive, com, uh, obsessive compulsive disorders in 2009. But the DBS has been used for a lot of neural disease, but mostly used for Parkinson's disease, tremor, and dystonia. I'd like to show the target of the each disease. And the first in the case is Parkinson's disease, STN, GPI, VIM, and PPN are chosen as target. In the case with the tremor, the VIM are, is chosen as target. In the case with the dystonia, the GPI or VA are chosen as target. Now I would like the, the suggested criteria for the surgical eligibility for Parkinson's disease. 
the high level of certainty about the diagnosis of idiopathic Parkinson's disease and the clinical progression for a minimum of four years. Confirmation of levodopa responsiveness using levodopa challenge test. So we need improvement of at least 30 to 40 percentage in part three of UPDRS. Exception to the need for levodopa responsiveness include patients with a severe disabling resting tremor or resistant to the dopaminergic therapy. The disabling motor complications of levodopa therapy, including the dyskinesia or motor fluctuations. The clinical evaluation should be performed in a specialized multidisciplinary movement disorder team. The functional disability must be defined by scale, Schwab and England functional scale or PDQ 39. The following attributes give support to the surgical eligibility. I mean, the young age onset severe tremor needed to reduce medications, nocturnal akinesia. I would like to show the typical indication of the patient of the video test. The patient left side is on stage and the right side is off stage. So you can see the right side on stage, the patient can walk in the ventilator, but the right, uh, uh, right side of stage, the patient cannot walk. She needs the assistance. You can see the tremor and the hesitation of gait and the masked face. She has the disability in the uh, daily life. The next I'd like to show the dyskinesia. The drug-induced dyskinesia is uh, uh, L-dopa therapy has uh, the side effect. You can see the, the dyskinesia on foot. And also the, you can see the, the, the dyskinesia on her head. The next is the, the, the severe disabling resting tremor resistant to the dopamine therapy. Yeah, this patient already has undergone the, the STND based therapy. Now I turned off the patient shows quickly the tremor you can see. Once more, I turned off the IPG. The patient showed the resting tremor, severe resting tremor, even in the he is a, has a Parkinson disease. The suggested absolute criteria for the ineligibility, the unstable clinical comorbidities, major psychiatric or neurobehavioral disorders, definitive dementia, doubtful diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, significant ventricular enlargement or cerebral atrophy in MRI, severe axial symptoms resistant to treatment with levodopa, inability to provide informed consent, social or geographic difficulties in gaining access to the center, or follow-up visits and uh, programming of the stimulator, absence of functional disability, and inadequate or fragile social support. Suggested the mandatory procedure regarding the candidacy for surgery. It includes levodopa challenge test and the brain MRI and the neuropsychological and the psychiatric preoperative assessment. And also the dopamine transporter scan, so-called DAT scan, might be necessary to define the Parkinson's disease diagnosis. 
So DBS can improve the motor fluctuations. You can see the, the uh, vertical axis is at, uh, ADL. So you can see the uh, motor fluctuations on stage and off stage. So the DBS can improve the raw activity of di uh, daily, daily life. Uh, we can expect the DBS continue to the, the on stage of a patient. The if medication dose is reduced, the high activity on stage might be worsened. And the DBS can enhance the raw activity of the life. So dystonia. So dystonia is a classified the based on types and the causes. The type of classification include focal, segmental, multifocal, and generalized. The causes of classification include primary or secondary. So especially the primary genetic dystonia is a very good candidate for DBS. So primary dystonia and DBS, the medical treatment does not always produce the adequate symptom. The terms and the GPI is targeted and the both therapeutic response is favorable, but generally accepted target is GPI. The result of DBS for secondary dystonia has been mixed. So response of segmental dystonia, including maze syndrome and cervical dystonia has been mixed and the GPI DBS might be effective. I'd like to show the severe tracheal dystonia. This patient had the uh, genetic, I mean the DYT6 and 11 dystonia. This is a pre-operative video. And she cannot uh, stand up, but she can sit down and she can eat. Now we did the GPI DBS. The, this video tape was recorded soon after the operations. So his, her symptom is improved very much. She is on the chairs. Now, uh, after uh, uh, several years later, so she can walk and she can eat, she can do everything. The secondary dystonia, the post-traumatic, the post-anarchistic dystonia, uh, post-anarchistic, the dystonia plus syndromes, and tardive dystonia had been reported in, in small sizes or case report with a favorable result. The classification of dystonia, The generalized or segmental, so you can see this video tape is the so-called maze syn syndrome. I did the this, the uh, GPI DBS for this patient, and I had to get the very good result outcome. So GPI DBS might be effective. So essential trauma. The tremor is classified. Tremor is classified in the resting and the actual and the postural and intentional. So essential tremor is many patients have a family history. It most frequently affect it most frequently affects the hands but they can also involve the head, the voice tongue, and the raw extremities. The prevalence of essential trauma increases with age. The VIM is the most widely agreed on target. 
most series report the 70 percentage to 90 percentage tremor control in patients undergoing the traumatic DBS. Tramotomy has been replaced by traumatic DBS. So SDN, zona insert, or the preliminary radiation may be a more effective possible target. I'd like to show the videotape. So this patient has also undergone the uh, VIMDBS. So now I turned off the, the uh, IPG battery. This patient shows the typical, typical essential tremor, action tremor. I asked this patient to write uh, his name or draw a line, but he could not. Now I asked the patient to hold the cup he try to hold a cup, but he, he cannot. This is a typical essential tremor. Now, now turn, I turned on IPG battery. So VIMDBS can completely improve the tremor. You can see the patient can hold the cup and the patient can drink. And also patient can write uh, right now. Yeah. I'd like to talk about the surgical procedures. The surgical procedure, the DBS surgery, the consists of three steps. The first of all, placement of electrode into the brain. This step is basically awake surgery. The next, the implantation of IPG. This step is a sleep surgery. So finally, attachment of the lead and the generator via a thin insulated wire known as an extension. So stereotactic procedure in awake, the, the first step is that the head frame is fixed to patient head. The second step, the MRI or CT is taken with a fiducial marker for pre-surgical planning. The bar hole is set and the microelectro recording is done and the test stimulation is applied. The, the first surgery is the most important one. The state of art surgery for stereotactic brain surgery. The placement of electrode into the brain needs these, these techniques, these technologies. The first about, I'd like to talk about the targeting. So we have two ways I mean the direct targeting and the indirect uh, direct targeting and also indirect targeting. So indirect targeting is based on a standardized stereotactic atlas and on a formula derived method based on AC and PC landmarks. The formula uses the mid commissural point MCP or the PC reference. The which is calculated after selecting the AC and the PC coordinates. The typical initial anatomical coordination for the STN as shown the table. The targeting was then adjusted based on indirect targeting from the border of the red nucleus. This slide shows the indirect targeting based on ACPC line. Uh, summarize. 
the target, the, in the case of Parkinson's disease, targeted the SDN and the GBI. So we calculate based on HPC line, these parameters like this. The VRM is uh, like this, 50 millimeter lateral, five millimeter anterior PC, and just on HPC line. So if the CT is used for uh, pre-surgical planning and manually, so you can determine the HPC line. And in the case with the VIMD, VIMDBS, so target is the lateral, the 15 to 18 millimeters and six meter, millimeter anterior to PC and just on HPC line. We determine the target like this. So if you use dexter frame, they have the X and Y axis from 40 to uh, uh, 160, the target is plotted and calculated by X and Y axis. For example, X axis coordination is 87 and Y axis coordination is 105. So recently the direct targeting of the STN based on high field MRI is developing. The red nucleus can also be clearly seen and the STN rise anterior and, and the lateral to the red nucleus. The anterior border of the red nucleus can be used as landmark for the anterior posterior local localization of STN target. And if you have the, the, the workstation or the navigation, I mean the frame link uh, workstation provided by Mellotronic can shoot two or more different images. The identify the nucleus in MRI image and create a target. Then create an entry on the surface of the brain, avoiding the sulcus, ventricles, and vessels, and connect the entry and the target and the draw trajectory. So like this. To get the target coordination in millimeters and the angle parameter in degree, just click the icon. You can see its coordination and the ring and the angles. It's very simple. The Dexel Slotak system is the preferred system for very precise intracranial neurosurgeries. The system uses X, X, Y. Z coordinate uh, stereotactically localize any point in 3D space. The arc employed the center of arc principle for encompassing the surgical target in three dimensions, enabling full access to any intracranial area. Now, we usually do the microelectoral recording to confirm the precise or functional area. The, this is our home-made microrecording system. So this system includes the display and the amplifier. and uh, the, some audio speaker, because we clarify the differentiate to the, the unit, I mean the basal ganglia or terms or something. This is also our originally developed the 3D atlas. So you can see the subthalamic nucleus and the reticular nucleus and the VA thalamus, VO thalamus, VP thalamus, 
this is a VI. It is a very important targeting for the, the tremor. And the coordinate nucleus, so you can see the GPI. So this is a data sheet. We write down the any neurophysiological sign, neural recording, and this is a graph paper. Now we uh, prepare to start the micro recording. I mounted the Dixel frame, the micro drive to the Dixel frame, and uh, we use the motorized micro drive. This drive advanced in the one micrometer. This is the, the, the micro electrode. Now I inserted the brain and uh, uh, the filled the fibrin glue to prevent the CSF leakage. So now we check the impedance, the measurement of the, the micro electrode. We are carefully at the bronze and we, if we obtain the unit recording. So I write, write down the each unit and its characteristic firing. For example, so we advance the 16.5 millimeters so we can get the, the background of recording activated. Now we enter the code coded nucleus. So this unit is uh, typical. The firing of in the coded the coded nucleus. And now we get the tramic unit recording. This is a recording the reticular nucleus. Now we enter the zona insert of the, the shell of STM. You can hear where you can see the high activity of the, the neural activity. Now the, we get the, the S10 activity. So like this, we can confirm the we are in, we can get the good uh, target in the S10 to to come by the micro electro record. The in the S10 micro electro recording. So electroactivity clearly increase in the SDN. When electro passed on out the SDN and enter into the SNR, the neural activity become regular. In the GPI recording, the first, the strata activity is recorded and it has low one and 10 hertz spontaneous discharge. Now we enter the GP neurons have a spontaneous discharge rate of the 30 to 60 hertz or which occur in the bursting, bursting or poser, poser pattern. So if we 
did in the, the GPI, the GPI neuron discharge are faster with the rate of 60 and to 100 hertz. So optic track can be identified by right sense, which increase the recording background. So in the procedures, so before starting operations, X-ray is taken with the fiducial marker, the, this, this X-ray, and X-ray is taken after DBS implantations. So to verify the tip of the implanted electrodes anatomically, so we overlay the each, each X-ray field. Like this. The, in the case is a tremor, so we can easily verify the effect of DBS clinically. I mean, the test simulation can quickly stop tremor. It is a very relief for us. This video tapes also the, in the case is a tremor. The before operation, we can check the, how it is the tremor. In the case is the, the tremor, the target is a VIA. So the first record in the record, uh, the retinal nucleus, now we get the VIM activity. And also it is, if it is very important to clarify the somatotopy of VI. Somatotopy means uh, uh, where is the uh, hand movement related cells or oral or elbow or uh, foot movement related cells. It is important to clarify the, these motor related cells to completely reduce or uh, improve the tremor. And we can get the tremor related cells. You can hear the background is responding to the is tremor. In the, the patient is awake. We can test the test simulation improve or not. So after micro electro recording, so uh, we, the micro electro recording the two, two trajectory. So this is a, you can see that this is a VI. So we implanted the DBS read the second trajectory. So this is the second trajectory. You can see the contact zero one, two is in the VI. Now in the, the case is a tremor, the test estimation quickly improve is tremor. I mean the confirm the clinically. We can ask to draw a line. He, he can successfully write his name the DB therapy requires brain surgery. Risks of brain surgery may include serious complications such as coma, bleeding inside the brain, stroke, seizures, and infections. So once implanted, the system may become infected. Parts may wear through the skin and the lead or lead extension connector may move. So finally, I'd like to talk about outcome of DBS. The Parkinson's disease. So this slide shows the effect of DBS 
compared with the, the medications. So this symptom in the cardinal symptom of the Parkinson disease, rigidity, blood kinesia, tremor, uh, gait and posture, disability, dyskinesia of time. So you can see the, the, so the, the, the effect of DPS compared with the medication, that the similar improvement, the rigidity, blood kinesia, tremor, but much better against gait posture, the dyskinesia, and off time brings. The dystonia. So dystonia is uh, usually the, the refractory to the medications. The general dystonia is a very good candidate for the GPI-DBS. Left-sided video shows the pre-operations. Right-sided is the post-operations. The patient, preoperatively, patient cannot the stand up straightly. So the post-operations, she can walk straight and turned out like this. So this slide so the, you can see the DYT1 genetic dystonia has a great effect so compared with the other type of dystonia. So how about the tremor? So DBS has improved effect against the tremor. However, the effect might come to decrease for a long time. It is the pre-surgical six months after surgery at last follow-up. So this is the, the, the horizontal axis in the follow-up years. On the right side, the tremor score, you can see the improvement effect is getting worse in 10 years. So DBS might have habituations. Okay. Now the, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kajita. You may please stop your screen sharing and turn on your video now. Miss, turn on your video. Okay. So we can see. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Thank you, really, Professor Kajita. It was really a very wonderful presentation. You have yeah. uh, demonstrated. I'm sorry, I, I'm not that. I'm not good at speaking English. I'm so worried. No, that's okay. Your I English was perfect. Yeah. Your English was perfect. We really thank you for coming down to our level and teaching us how good is DBS for uh, movement disorders. Since the last time we had the trial session, you had. Uh, added on several slides. I was really surprised. I really thank you for teaching us elaborately for uh, on DBS on movement disorders. There are so many questions which uh, the young neurosurgeons would like to interact with you. So I would call upon uh, as in the order, uh, Dr. Christian, are you there? Christian Watt, are you there? Ah, yes, I'm here. Yeah, please ask your question, Professor Christian Watt. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have one question. Uh, please, professor, please. how about uh, lesioning for Parkinson's disease? Because in developing country like my country in Indonesia, uh, DBS is very expensive. So how about uh, lesioning for uh, Parkinson's disease? How about you? Thank you, Professor. So you, you mean the, how is it different between the races? 
empty ear or white or something. Christian is uh, asking that DBS is very expensive in this country. So yeah, he's yeah. asking about how what is the quality after lesioning? Yes, uh, yes, my question. Okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah, of course the DBS is very expensive, but the DBS has the, the adjustable, not, uh, something a very good advantage. So lesioning is uh, the very cheap one. But if you can the, the make the very good region, it's a very nice one. But if you fail to the good region, uh, good region, appropriate region, the, I'm, I'm so worried about the, the, some, the post-operative side effect, something. I mean the dis or some forest or something. So I think so if you start the regioning of the stratax regionings, I think I I I think that you have a good training for the stereotactic surgery. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Christian Watt, you want to come in? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, please, Dr. Christian Watt. Uh, no, no, no. I, it's it's fairly clear statement for the professor. Thank you, professor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Dr. Watt, please come in. Yeah, we have. Uh, do you hear me clearly? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead oh, with your question. Okay. Question is: What is the best time to consider a DBS for Parkinson patient? When do you decide to consider DBS? Uh, uh, you start with medication, and then you go on and go on, and at a certain point, you decide to go for surgery. So. What is what is your approach? Yeah, thank you very for nice questions. So usually in the cases of Parkinson disease, the levodopa therapy started, and maybe the seven or eight years later, the patient will have the motor complications, including the 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 motor fluctuation and dyskinesia or something. Maybe the new neurologist will try to the some adjustment of the med medications, try to the, uh, the improve the complications. But uh, at that time, I mean the the when the the motor complication the began in the patient, I think the I'm recommend to the indication of the DBS because uh, uh, I started the DBS surgery since 2000. I mean, the, the, the first the patient already have a 20 years history following the DBS. The, unfortunately, the patient with the Parkinson's disease, so finally, come to be the dementia or a psychiatric problem, then I think the, if possible, the patient had the DBS surgery at early stage. So patient get uh, the beneficial effect for a long time. So I, my answer is uh, the timing is uh, to be to have more tough, uh, complication, had the, uh, the patient has uh, motor complication. It is the right. best of time. To thank you, thank you, Professor. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Jitin wants to come in. Dr. Jitin, are you there? Would you like to ask Professor Kajita? Yeah, yes, 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 thank you. Please, Dr. Jitin. Yeah, I was talking about this uh, adaptive DBS simulation, actually. So those things were in those two things you're talking about those things pretty far in the last two three years. Is there need development happening in that area? Professor Dr. Jitin is asking about adaptive deep brain stimulation. Do you deep have any experience? Adaptive deep brain stimulation. Adapting. Adaptive deep brain stimulation. Adapting which is the close close circle. Dr. Jason, would you like to clarify? Is this something the feedback? A DB with the feedback? 
Yeah, yeah. He's asking about the DBS with the feedback. Feedback. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You uh, you mean the closed closed loop DBS surgery in the future? Some company will develop the the adaptive DBS system. It's a very nice one because uh, the the DBS system sensing the abnormal the neural firing. And just on that time, the simulation is applied to the patient. It, I, 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 I don't, uh, it is correct, my answer. So your, your question is uh, the adaptive means uh, closed loop DBS system devices? Exactly, exactly closed loop DBS. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. That's, yeah. yeah, maybe some years later, or uh, maybe. Currently, the, is it used in Japan? No, not no. used in Japan. Right. Yeah, right. commercially Thank, Thank, yeah. Thank you, Jitin, for asking. Dr. Ahmed Najjar, Dr. Ahmed Najjar, would you like to come in? Dr. Ahmed Najjar, are you there? Yes. Yes, please ask your question. So uh, basically, uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for the nice uh, presentation. Uh, a few tips uh, about the DBS. Uh, so I I was having basically uh, two questions. I I think I've heard that you said that in your series that uh, it uh, improved after uh, salamic DBS. Am I, am I right? I, I, I thought always that the gate is a trade uh, that it might actually get worse after DBS for Parkinson's disease. And uh, uh, what do you think about that? So you, you mean the target is a VIM? No, Dr. Najjar is asking that uh, what about gait instability following DBS? Have you have any experience regarding patients oh, developing okay. gait instability after I, DBS? I, 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 uh, sorry, I can understand. The I, I think your the, your question is a very good good point because the, the DB system or improve the tremor or rigidity is a very good improvement. But uh, unfortunately, the gait disturbance is also improved by DB surgery, but not so long term. Maybe one or year, two years later some patient uh, has the, the getting worse of the gait. Yeah, that's, 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 that's it right. is there. Right. So it's rare, right. Is there yeah. any more questions? My co-host Liu, would you like to come in? And all the yeah. other members of the ACNS Education Committee, Sachin, Binoy, are you there? Divya is here. Are you there? Would you like to come in? Uh, Prof, uh, thank, thanks for the very nice presentation. Uh, I, I just wanted to know, uh, because of the, the long-term and the effectiveness of DBS, we depleted if a patient on a long-term uh, uh, medication previously, and we tend to start uh, DBS earlier, as you commented uh, uh, much more earlier. I just wanted to know, uh, based on patients who have a DBS implanted, the effectiveness, does it change just like medication? I mean the effectiveness to control the 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 symptom is it better? I mean in in long run. Yeah, I think the 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 basically basically so the DBS can improve the rebodopa medication responsive symptom. The the it the maybe the the patient with the Parkinson disease. It uh, has a long history of disease progression. Maybe it, the dopamine responsiveness is decreasing. The, therefore, I think the, the irudopa medication has a limit to improve the symptom of the Parkinson disease. I think the DBS has also the same problem. Therefore, the, I mean, the, I think the, I, my patient the, has a long term following the DBS surgery. The patient 
um, such a in the such a patient, the medication elderberry therapy, reviews the both does not help the improvement of uh, symptom. Maybe the that the patient is uh, unfortunately bed rest. Yeah, maybe the maybe in the near future. Yeah, some treatment would the necessary. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. Professor. So, if there are no more further questions, uh, we would wind up this session. Once again, I would like to thank Professor Kajita on behalf of the ACNS Education Committee, as well as my co-host Liu and the President of the ACNS, Professor Yoko Kato. Thank you very much for giving us a detailed description of the procedure as well as the effectiveness of the brain stimulation in movement disorders. Thank you very much, Professor. And yeah. I hope we would like to have your association in the future also regarding other lectures on the ACNS webinars. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, thank John, you. thank you, John, for organizing this. And thanks all my colleagues of the ACNS Education Committee for taking part here. Thank you. And uh, for the next uh, Saturday, I would like to announce the webinar of Professor Naoki Otani. He is going to talk about extradural temporopolar approach for paracellular lesions. I invite you all to join our next uh, webinar on Saturday. This is the same time, 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time and Japanese time, 9.30 p.m. So thank you all. Thank you once again. John, you can take over. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, doctor. Your your English is better than our Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So, so thank you. We understood everything. And, and, and uh, welcome, everyone. Great job, Rasha. And we'll see you thank guys, you. everyone, next week. Yeah, sure. See you all next week. Arigato. 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 Bye. Very Bye. good. OK. Yeah, John. Okay. You got some, uh, Roger, you and Leo have great backgrounds there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, Thanks, John. That's, Thanks, John. That's, that's good. That's, that's good yeah. for branding. Okay. Right. Next, next Saturday or uh, next Saturday or I, tomorrow? I'll mail you the flash. I'll mail, mail you the flash shortly, John. By tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, you, oh, yeah. Sure. You're going to do one tomorrow? Right. Yeah. I'll mail yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Let you, me know. Thank you. Let me know. Okay. Thank great. you, John. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for your help.